I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to give me this opportunity to speak in this uh, one rule seminar, one rule PDE seminar. And this is a, a, a joint work with uh, my former postdoc, uh, Bo Lo, and my former PC student, Peng Fei Liu, my current student, uh, Jia Jie Chiang and uh, Huang. So some of you already may have heard of my talk uh, in different places, So, uh, but I would uh, present some new results towards the uh, second half of my talk. So I hope you be patient. So, okay. So this is a, a 3D incompressible Euler equation. So U it is the velocity field, P it is the pressure. And so the velocity field is divergent free. If it's incompressible, it means the divergent free of the velocity field. So 3D Euler is particularly difficult because uh, uh, if you define the vorticity as a curve of U, then what is it? Uh, it's being transported by the velocity field, but also produce a so-called water stretching term. So the velocity field is can be recovered uh, by the vorticity through the field of Savar law, but the gradient U is a, a risk uh, uh, operator uh, of the degree zero. So it's non-local. And formally gradient U scale the same order as vorticity. Okay, for any P grade strictly greater than one less infinity, Reading use bound above and below by what is in LP. So formally, this, this term scale quadratically as a function of what is So for a long time, people conjecture that the, uh, the 3D what Euler equation with smooth initial data with finite energy may develop a finite time singularity. So the only a, a priori estimate that we know it is the uh, energy is concerned, uh, which is too weak to prevent uh, a finite time singularity. So there have been a lot of uh, uh, work has been devoted to the, the 3D Euler and Navisto equation. So the one of the, uh, the best well-known result is due to Bill Kettlemeyer, that we say that if the initial, uh, if the 3D Euler equation has ceased to be uh, regular at some finite time t, if the if the vorticity have to blow up in in, in this fashion, so maximum vorticity have to blow up, moreover has been not integrable in time up to this capital T. So my early work was inspired by the work of Konstantin Pfeffer Maida in 1996, where they realized that the vorticity vector, the unit vector, the regularity of the vorticity vector can play an important role to dynamically deplete this uh, uh, nonlinearity. Right? So, so there's a lot of subtle cancellation within the local operator here. So if the vorticity vector, like in 2D, for example, in two-dimensional case, vorticity vector only point in the Z direction, it's a constant vector. So then there's no, this term exactly vanish. So 2D has a maximum principle, but this has been transported, no amplification. So 2D does no blow up, right? But for, for 3D, if the vorticity vector, uh, the gradient of vorticity vector in the region cover the maximum vorticity is supposed to L2 integral in time, and, and plus the assumption the velocity field remain bounded, then you can also exclude finite time blow up. So, so in 2000, Five with my former postdoc Jen Deng and my former PhD student Sing Wei Yu. So we generate this result using a Lagrangian approach by following as, as a, a water line segment, which is the arc link can collapse to a point. So here they require this regular regularity of the water vector has to be in an order one region. Omega tau has to be a, have a size of order one, cannot swing to a point. But we know that most likely if there's any blow up, it should be a, a blow at a one single point in, in, in space. So we would like to, to, uh, to relax this condition so that it may uh, only require the, the vorticity vector regularity in the, in the localized region that can swing to a point at the time of singularity. So, so if you follow this uh, vortex line segment and the arc length of this, of this vortex line segment allowed to swing to zero, we are assuming that if the curvature and this is the other curvature, diversion of the autistic vector, are integrable along this vortex line segment. And plus the fact that we do not require that the velocity field to be bounded as long as the maximum velocity field along this vortex line segment are integrable in time, you can also uh, exclude finite time singularity. And there's some very recent uh, exciting work about uh, in 2019 by Tarek Algindi who showed that for a very relatively weak, very weak uh, uh, initial condition, like a C alpha initial vorticity, with a very small alpha, you can also, uh, the Euler equation can develop finite singularity. 
But I would like to point out that this construction with, without water, with, without swirling. So in, in 3D oil equation for the axis symmetric 3D oil without swirling, if you have a smooth initial data, it's known that you cannot uh, develop a finite time single at global regularity. So by working on it's a very weak uh, class of initial data, you actually gain some, uh, you, you somehow enhance the water stretching. So there's a competition between the erection term and the water stretching term because both of these terms come from the same source by taking a curve of this erection term. So by working on the vorticity uh, initial condition that we, in C alpha with alpha very small, somehow you penalize this erection term. So you favor the water stretching term in, in some sense, okay? So I'll come back to this later. So there have been uh, also a uh, lot of the attempt to search for finite time singularity numerically. So this is a long list of uh, researcher, right? But I, I would say until quite uh, recently, until my joint work with uh, Guo Lo, uh, most of this uh, uh, numerical evidence uh, seems to be inconclusive. So in 2014, with uh, uh, my former post of Guo Lo, we, we identify a new class of uh, potential finite time singularity that occur at the stagnation point uh, of the flow along the boundary. So this is a, a, a symmetric 3D oil equation. It is a, it, uh, the vortice angle of vorticity, angle of stream function and angle of velocity field are off function of Z as a function of Z. So this is a solid boundary, we have a no flow bound of mission. So that, that the, what the singularity occur right at this uh, boundary, at, at I equal to one and Z equal to zero at this uh, at stagnation point. So this is like a ring-like singularity, it collapsed with the radio collapsed rapidly to zero at a finite time. So, so we basically solved this, uh, we formulated this really as a symmetric Euler equation that we first introduced with uh, uh, Professor Kuming Lee in, uh, in a paper published in CPAM in 2008. So by introducing this uh, change of variable, so U theta is the angle of velocity, angle of vorticity, omega theta, angle of stream function. And these three function has to be an off function of R if, if this uh, solution remains smooth. So this it has a removable singularity. By making this change of variable, you can somehow remove this uh, cylindrical coordinate singularity. So you get an equivalent class of uh, uh, equation for the 3D asymmetric oil equation. So in my computation with Paul Law, we take a, a initial condition have a large swarm. So this is a U1 corresponding to U theta, but the other two velocity component equal zero, set it to be zero. And that's periodic in Z direction. Okay, there's no flow bound in R to one. So then we, we, we observe that the, the, uh, the, the maximum autistic have a very rapid growth. So it blow up like a, a, on the ray, like a, a capital T, one over capital T minus T to the power 2.4597 with a very, very fine uh, adaptive mesh. So the effective uh, uh, mesh in, in the, near the singularity is about 10 to the power 12 in each dimension, the number of grid. So using very effective uh, adaptive mesh. So this certainly violates the Bukato minor condition because it's not integrable in time, the maximum vorticity. So in the same paper that we also propose a one dimensional model at R to one. So by, by, uh, by drawing an analog with the 2D Busnet's equation. So now we draw trying to derive a 1D Busnet's equation along the boundary R to one. So if, if, you, if you call this the temperature theta equal to U one square and the angle of the axis velocity field we call U, so because the no flow bound recognition, there's no R correct uh, uh, convection term at R equal to one. So this is exact. So what we need to approximate the view of our law restricted to the boundary R equal to one. So by assuming that the vorticity can be extended to from R equal to one to all the way to minus infinity as a constant, you can integrate out the view of our law exactly. So you derive a, 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 a view of our law, the use of Z equal to Hubert transform of vorticity along the, the boundary. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, yeah, this will close the system with u0 equal to zero, right? So, and, and, and with uh, uh, Sasha Kislev and, and Vladimir Sverik and, and, and the two former postdoc of uh, Kislev at the time, Choi and Yao Yao. So we actually can prove rigorously this one dimensional model plot in finite time. And you need to use all the symmetry condition of the initial condition that we impose for the 3D uh, Euler equation. So this is a comparison between the 1D model, we call the HL model, and the three-dimensional case, but restricted at the boundary R1. So this is the omega one compared to omega. 
you can see it have a same quality of the growth. In fact, the blood race is a, the exponent also surprisingly similar. So uh, this is the axial velocity field. So you can see also a very similar feature. So, so uh, inspired by our computation and, 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 and Kislev and Sverik in 2014, they also uh, resolve a, a longstanding open question that for 2D Euler equation, we know there's no finite time blow up, but it, uh, the gradient of autistic on the other hand can, in theory, can grow double exponential in time. But nobody has been able to construct that, that this double exponential uh, upper bound can be re actually realized for a smooth uh, solution. So using this, this same, same type of initial boundary condition with the, the R symmetry, so they can rigorously prove that this uh, 2D all equation with the boundary can achieve this uh, gradient what this can achieve double exponential growth in time. So I mentioned that, that this is uh, uh, the work that for the 1D model that the, uh, we published a paper in 2017 in CPAM. And there was a, a, another very interesting work by, by this collaborator, by this uh, author, 2016, they, they showed us a, a, like a water patch kind of solution, but it is a, for a family of a solution, a, a family of equation that's more slightly more singular than to the Euler all the way to surface uh, uh, SQG model that they can also develop by the singularity. But the, the presence of the boundary and the asymmetry are all play a very important role. So I, I mentioned earlier about the work by Alkindi. So, so in the, uh, the first part of the, my talk, I would, would like to, to uh, outline some results that we uh, trying to develop computer assisted proof to, to, to as attempt to justify the, uh, the computation that I, I the computational result that uh, Golo and I obtained in 2014. So the 3D assisted symmetric Euler equation uh, kind of qualitatively has the same scaling in the 2D Busnets equation since the singularities uh, occur at, at the boundary, at R to one. So if we assume that there was a cell similar blow up in the R and Z plane, in the R and Z plane, not in the X, Y, Z plane, it's very important because it's NS entropic. In the X, Y, Z plane, it is not a, a, a cell similar. So then you can show that the, uh, making this answer to the 3D order equation, then you can show this extra term is actually asymptotically small. So it has the same scaling as the 2D Bussinet equation. So it makes sense to, to, to first look at the a, a slightly simplified uh, uh, 2D Boosting equation, which is, uh, is still open whether or not the finite time singularity can occur for 2D Boosting equation. So we use a dynamic scaling approach and also, also called a modulation technique in PD community. So I first learned about this technique from George Papanikola when I was a postdoc uh, at Kurang. And so they use this technique as a numerical uh, uh, technique to, to investigate critical blow up of the linear Zudinger equation. And this technique was further developed by Frank Murr and, 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 and co-author to as a PDE technique, they call a modulation technique. So basically they, we, we try to develop a, a, a stable method to analyze a unstable blow up. Blow up is kind of unstable, right? But by, by zooming to the singularity, that compute, study the potential cell similar profile and study the stability of the cell similar profile that enable us to, to uh, establish a finite time singularity analytically. So this is the idea. So, so the dynamic scaling approach is to introduce a stretching variable, ZL. So you, you stretch the, the, the spatial variable so that instead of, instead of having a focusing blow up, you want to, to have a, a smooth profile. You're also introducing a damping variable on the right hand side for the dynamic variable so that the amplitude will not go to infinity but will remain finite, right? So, so you, and this three scaling parameter has to satisfy a linear relationship in order to be equivalent to the original, uh, the original 2D Bussinet equation. And you can show that the, uh, if theta uh, omega is the solution of the original 2D Bussinet equation by introducing a rescaling variable capital C theta, capital CL, capital C omega, which is related to little c of theta c omega in this fashion, and you also rescale the time, then you can show that this rescale solution will satisfy the dynamic rescaling equation exactly, assuming that this uh, linear relationship is, is, is satisfied. So the, now the finite time, so the question of study, the finite time singularity can be turned into the question whether or not you can show that the dynamic scaling equation have a converged to a, a, a non-trivial solution 
or, ha or have, a, have a steady state. And also in the limit, as t go to, as we scale time go to infinity, if this damping factor remain negative, it's a finite gap away from zero, negative. And then you can show that if this we converge to a limiting value, which is negative, then you can show that when you map back to the physical time, which we'll call tau now, so that we have a finite time singularity. So that is the, the, the whole philosophy. So let me show you this uh, high level picture. So you basically introduce a new uh, dynamical system and we call uh, this U, it's not the velocity U here. So we call this uh, omega theta as a, as a vector variable. You have a dynamic equation. There's a dynamic scaling equation. which so has a quadratic and a local nonlinearity on the right hand side. So we don't know whether or not there's such a, a complicated uh, uh, dynamic scaling oil equation has a, a non-trivial steady state, right? But numerically you can compute because uh, now that you, you rescale the solution, the, the profile becomes smooth. So with a uh, very high order accurate numerical method, you can solve this uh, dynamic scaling equation to approximate steady state in the sense that have a residue with a very, very small. Okay, with a, you can control it by numerical resolution. So now you have something you can hold on. So then you can interpolate this in numerical constructed solution using some basis into the whole space. And then you can start a perturbation can solve perturbation so, so, that, so that the sum of the two will be exactly that will be the exact solution of the original dynamic rescaling solution. So, so we already know U bar because we construct it numerically and then interpolate the whole, whole space. Now we need to, to construct a, a, a correction, a perturbation, you we call U tilde. The U tilde is satisfied by this equation exactly. So the leading order term of a linearized operator around the approximate steady state we call U bar. There's a quadratic nonlinearity because the capital F, the right hand side due to the direction term, it has only quadratic nonlinearity. And then the remaining term is the, the residual error. So this is the exact equation for U tilde. So now the main, main, main idea, the main difficulty is that if you can establish some kind of linearized stability, when you linearize this uh, operator, the, 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 the dynamic scaling equation around the approximate steady state, if that has some kind of damping, okay, in the sense that you, you construct some energy norm, some weighted energy norm. So the linearized operator has some kind of damping with some kind of positive lambda. If you, that is that is the most difficult part of the analysis. Then you can actually control the perturbation. Right? Make a formal variety in using the Duhamel principle. Uh, and, and further assuming that the uh, uh, using the same norm where you get linear damping, that's also having a linear stability, which is typically like a, some kind of weighted H1 norm. So then you can derive a, 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 a a inequality, integral inequality for the perturbation. Because the linearized operator has damping, so you actually, you gain this uh, damping factor here. So you get a quadratic, like Guangwu kind of inequality. So now you, 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 you in a very good situation, they suppose the initial perturbation are very small. So it's how small, small compared to the, uh, of the same order as the residual error, make very small. And then you can show that if the initial using a bootstrap argument, because you have a linear uh, damping here, this you have a linearized operator that has damping, so that the, the perturbation can never escape this energy pool bounded by radius A, which is for the epsilon. So as long as it's, uh, you take the A small enough, it's basically comparable to all the epsilon, you can satisfy this. Then you can show that perturbation will, will be forever trapped inside this energy pool. And that is sufficient to establish the finite time singularity. And based on this a priori estimate on the energy for the perturbation, you can if you can further show that the uh, that the actually the, the, the uh, in some like in two D Poisson equation, we can actually show that the uh, uh, for the CR for initial data, you can actually show that it actually converges to a exact steady state. Okay, it is a two two step argument. First, it establishes a, a priori a priori estimate so that the, the perturbation is trapped inside this small energy ball, and then you can. Time, take a time differentiation of the perturbation so that the error will drop out so it's because the epsilon is time independent because it's approximate steady state. By differentiating in time, you can estimate the time due of the perturbation. You can show that uh, using a compactness argument, you can show that the, uh, uh, that the, uh, the, the exact solution will converge to a, a, a steady state. So that means you have a self-similar block in finite time. So let me uh, briefly illustrate this uh, philosophy by, by looking at the 1D uh, HL model. So, so this is a, the HL one, one dimension model restricted to the argument one that I mentioned earlier. 
So surprisingly, numerical evidence showed that the, the, the blow up exponent CL is, is very close to three, which is very close to the, what we observe in the 3D asymmetric Euler equation, which is have 2.93, something like that. Yeah, something very close to three. So since the, uh, don't you do the same kind of dynamic scaling up uh, formulation for this 1D model, I uh, introduce a stretching variable CL and then the damping variable C omega and C theta. Again, they have to satisfy this linear relationship. Because uh, omega is coupled to u theta, u theta sub x, so we differentiate the second equation with respect to x, we get the equation for theta sub x. So that is a couple system between omega and theta sub x. So for this uh, uh, dynamic scaling equation, we can actually uh, find a analytic approximate state uh, with a residual error about 0.05, which is too large for to close the, the, the uh, uh, argument. But that gives you a lot of structure you can, you can um, you can use. So, but numerically, we can actually, using a fourth order uh, adaptive method, you can actually drive the error epsilon to 10 to minus eight. That is enough for us to close the argument. And the approximate steady state, again, has a, a, a exponent very close to, to three. So, so in order to, to, to uh, close this uh, dynamic scale equation, we have to specify uh, two normalization condition because you have a three prime, we introduce three parameter C omega, C L, C theta, we, we, we only have one linear relationship to, to connect the three parameter. So we need two additional so-called normalization parameter. So these are the perturbation variable. We, we drop the tilde here. The bar stands for the approximate steady state. So this is the one without the, 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 uh, the bar, it is uh, the perturbation, we drop the tilde, okay? So the, so the normalization condition for the other two damping variable is related to the perturbation, it, the dynamic variable, the perturbation at the singularity location at x equals zero. So we said we impose this uh, dynamic, uh, this normalization condition is so that the, uh, the omega sub x and the theta sub x, x uh, uh, remain zero, the perturbation remains zero for all time. But initially we force it to be zero. So this, uh, uh, so that the, uh, the right hand side of this uh, equation has a high order of energy powers so order x squared. So now this is the, uh, uh, the linearized equation that we kept. So let me identify, highlight a few terms. So this is the what that's, this is the stretching term, is the erection term, right? This is the original uh, linearized operator, but this is the stretching variable. So it turns out that this erection term is the one that gives you uh, damping, right? It's a localized uh, convection term gives you damping. And it's like the, the, it pushes the, the solution from x equals zero far to the far field. But on the other hand, you have some unstable term that right inside right this term near x equals zero have a, it's a growing term, so it has a sign positive, okay? Because we know that the approximate steady state, so you know that uh, near x equals zero, this is about, uh, uh, about 0.5. So, so this is not, not, not damping. You have the local term because the uh, u, u sub x is cou coupled to the uh, uh, Hubert transform by this, uh, uh, by this, this uh, Biosol law, simplified Biosol law. So you have a non-local uh, term on the right hand side, right? Which is, uh, we, you don't know it is a stabilizing or destabilizing, so it's a non-local operator, right? And this is, a, this is the good term, you can see, see, see omega bar is minus one here. So in some sense, you have a very limited uh, uh, term that contributed to the, to the damping effect, but you have some bad term that you can, can give you growth and some non-local term that you need to control. And also the far view decay is very, very slow, relatively slow. Yeah. Okay. So unlike for so the Nanini Zulinger equation, the other uh, Nanini PDE, that if you consider self similar blow up, the far view decay very rapidly. But here you only have a very fractional, very mild decay in the far view. That also introduce difficulty. So we, we uh, use a, a singular uh, weighted subplot space to, to establish the, the linear stability. So to illustrate that the, in order to extract damping from this uh, uh, erection term, so we we, we uh, using a damping, uh, a single weight of x to the minus k. Turns out that the larger the k is, the more damping you can extract. So you can do a simple integration by part for the L2 estimate for omega. You can do the same thing for theta sub x. You can see that the, uh, you can go back to this stretching term uh, and plus the damping term give you a, a negative damping effect here. Okay, but the negative damping, even for x close to zero, which is the maximum amount of damping, is not very large, it's about this order. So you can see that it depends on the, the factor, the integer k here. So the larger the k is, the more damping you have. So that's why we would like to impose this normalization condition 
so that we so that the right hand side vanishing uh, is a high order so that we can take a larger k to extract more damping but since we need to have a, have a, a damping that put it much uniform for all x not just near x equals zero because this is an analysis in the whole whole plane now in the whole space so we need to actually using a, a number of singular way to, to cover the near field intermediate field and the far field Right, so that the uh, so that the, if the damping effect that we extract are pretty uniform, as uniform as possible across the whole whole line. So, but even so, that with this very carefully designed single way, that the uh, we do not have that much damping. So, so the damping for theta sub x is even smaller, about 0.05, even for x very close to zero, and for omega squared is about 1.75. But as I mentioned earlier, you have some other bad guy you need to take care of. So you have a very limited budget. You don't have a large parameter, okay? And we don't have a small parameter to play with. Now we have to, at the same time, have to handle this destabilizing term, the growth term. And this is the two bad term that have, does not offer any damping, right? If you naively do a rate energy estimate that you can easily overwhelm the damping effect the, 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 uh, that we have. So you, you cannot do a straightforward energy estimate. So we, it turns out that you need to, for example, these two bad terms, you, that, that you have to exploit cancellation between them. So by, by estimate these two equations uh, uh, together, right? Uh, by notice the fact that this, uh, uh, that this is a, there's a sign inequality here with, with a single way that the velocity use of X and omega has some kind of uh, 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 alignment. So, so, uh, so, so based on this observation, by, by treating a, a, way, a single way estimate these two terms together, you can actually show that they have some, the major part of them can cancel each other. So, it, it, it's, so, so much better than if you estimate them individually. And you also need to use uh, uh, the, the isometry, L2 isometry of the Hilbert, Hilbert's transform. That uh, if you, if this, if this term, Using the single way x to the minus k, you can con convert it back to the L2 estimate of this without any loss of constant. You have a constant in one here. You, we also need to use a, a, a optimal a Hardy inequality to control u because uh, we have to uh, control the non-local term. So you can uh, uh, control this uh, uh, this this uh, this uh, the, the the u the, the the velocity field term by subtracting the leading order term and control the uh, by this hard inequality with a very nice coefficient, very sharp coefficient. And then you can use this uh, L2 isometry, com, 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 uh, convert it back to the L2 estimate of, uh, of uh, omega. So then, so you need to use all this uh, uh, very careful uh, analysis. And, uh, and, and there's another source of difficulty, it is a coefficient, damping coefficient. It is also a non-local uh, uh, constant as function of time, which is offered that theoretic, the reason we add this term is to offer damping to, to, to put down the maximum uh, of uh, omega. So we expected some damping uh, for this C omega. So you can actually derive an ODE for C omega, which is in a local couple to omega, and that offer additional damping. So if you use all this observation, then you can actually show, establish the auto uh, uh, stability with a finite damping effect. So we, by using all this uh, property, then you can actually establish this uh, crucial uh, property that you have uh, the way the energy as may have a, have a, a negative damping. And then the linear stability is easier because uh, you have a smallness, right? It's a weakly instability because uh, the, the, the epsilon is small, so the energy, the, the perturbation is very small. So it's a weak uh, and linear stability. But when we're trying to generalize this idea from one dimensional case to two dimensional case, then we encounter some additional difficulty that we do not have in one dimensional case. Because ultimately we would like to show this is true to 2D Bussner's equation and the 3D Euler equation. So for 2D Bussner's equation, you can omega couple the u theta sub x and theta sub x also coupled to theta sub y. So you have to introduce theta equation for theta sub y so you have a three by three equation, three, three by three system. In the one dimensional case, so we use a very, in a very crucial way, there's some nice cancellation among different uh, two bad term and local term. Uh, uh, it's due to the property, the Hubert transform. But in 2D, we do not quite have this uh, nice cancellation problem. We don't have the analog for this uh, in 2D anymore. Uh, and also the, the, the L2 isometry and the Hilbert transform we cannot use anymore. 
But the more, more, more serious difficulty come from a Russian term in the Y direction, right? So in, in the Y direction, the, uh, if you restrict it to, uh, so Y it is the R variable now. So Y goes zero, it is the boundary, right? So in the one D case, if you, if you stick in, on the boundary, you can never get out because there's a no flow boundary condition, right? But in 2D case, uh, if you have a slightly away from the boundary, and then the Y transport to carry the flow away, further away from the boundary. So it turns out that the Y transport become very destabilizing in the dynamic rescaling formulation. Or in some sense, when you go back to the physical space, it's the erection term that tend to, to stabilize the potential blow up, to, to prevent the blow up. So in order to, to really uh, show that the, the 2D Boosnitz equation uh, uh, can actually develop finite time singularity, you somehow need to control this uh, Y transport term. This, this is something that we do not need to, to deal with in the 1D model. So inspired by the work of uh, uh, Terry Elgindi for the uh, 3D oil equation that, uh, 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 without wall, without boundary. So we, uh, we've judged a check. So this, this work just been published in communi communication mathematical physics. So we can prove two theorem. So we show that the, uh, for if the work on the uh, initial condition uh, class omega is a compact support, but in C alpha class, and theta is a C1 alpha compact support. Then we can show that for a sufficiently small uh, alpha, that exists an alpha naught, such that the, uh, uh, for all alpha less than alpha naught, the, the solution of 2D Poisson equation in the upper half plane, so with the boundary here. So, so this is actually driven by small, not, not, it's not without small. So we develop, we develop a finite time singularity in the velocity field is a C1 alpha with finite energy. And we can do something similar for the 3D oil equation, 3D as a symmetric oil equation with a similar kind of class, right? So you need to take care of the, 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 uh, the, the, the solution near R equals zero. So we assume the initial condition have a compact support that away from the R equals zero. Then we show that the compact support will remain away from R equals zero up to the singularity time. So the reason that the, the C alpha class for the omega and the gradient theta it is so important in analysis is uh, was first observed by uh, Algindi and John in 2017, that if you work on, on, on what initial condition of in this class, in, in, in this class will preserve dynamically. So the erection term is being penalized. You get a factor of alpha here. Alpha is exactly this alpha. That's why you require alpha to be very small. You treat alpha as a small parameter. Okay, so the both the erection term in the velocity field and the theta sub x, theta sub y are small. So, so that can some kind of take care of a lot of the difficulty that we encounter. So the y transport term that I mentioned earlier has become a troublemaker uh, for our case become now become uh, not an issue because by taking alpha very small, the y transport term that it can be, uh, uh, can be penalized. So by changing the variable from, from x, y to capital R and beta, this is introduced by Elkindi. So we kept the R equal to this and the little R beta given by, by this polar, polar coordinate and kept the R equal to little R to the power alpha. So you can unfold the singularity. So introduce a new variable, uh, kept the omega for little omega and eta for theta sub x and can see for theta sub y. So then in, they follow the same kind of derivation from Elkindi that, that when you work on the C alpha class of initial vorticity, the stream function, the rescale stream function has a very simple leading order structure that characterized by this L12 operator. Okay, it's, it's, it's a, it is a, a little bit similar to Hubert transform, but is in, in, uh, in 2D right, plus lower the term. So this term is one very large, one over alpha, very alpha very small. So this is this term dominating. So by, by make, making this observation and also the construction of our, our, our finite time singularity, we can actually construct an analytic uh, self similar block for the uh, leading order system that has an asymptotic uh, scaling, meaning that the theta sub y is uh, of alpha or the alpha smaller than theta sub x. So you can actually neglect the coupling of theta sub y to the theta in the theta sub x equation because this is uh, asymptotically small with respect to alpha. So you can only get a coupling equation of the leading order between the omega, the vorticity, and theta sub x, which is the eta variable. You can, because you can, because the, the erection term is small, so you can actually drop all the erection term to get a, 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 a Riccardi type of a, a, a couple system. It's a non-local uh, uh, ODE system, non-local ODE system. As long as the initial condition of theta sub x, eta, theta sub x, and omega are positive, this has a very robust blow up. 
and it blocks in a cell similar way. So then we can uh, actually prove that uh, using a very more sophisticated uh, radiant energy estimate uh, to control the Nanini stability, we have to, to work on radiant H3 plus the C1 norm to handle the very slow decay of the, so some far few solution. So then you can actually construct this, uh, complete this energy estimate. So this linearized uh, uh, stability, you have a damping term. It's about a very small damping, minus one over 12. Uh, this is an uh, additional term due to the non-local uh, erection term, which is small, we have gain alpha factor. So this is non stability, which is uh, small, and this is the, 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 the error for the approximate steady state, right? So then you can actually show that if the initial energy ball remain bounded by all the alpha square, and will remain bounded for all time by using bootstrap argument. And then you can, for the boostness equation, by, by taking the time derivative of the perturbation, you can further show that uh, the, the, the dynamic scaling solution will converge to a exact steady state. If the steady state solution is also unique in a small, inside this small energy pool. So that, that we can actually quickly show that for 2D boostness equation, uh, it will develop in the C, C alpha initial, con, initial vorticity class, we develop a cell similar finite time singularity with finite energy. So, so that is pretty much uh, what I would like to say about the, uh, about the, the PDE part. Uh, and right now we're trying to generalize this uh, to, to smooth solution, but not in the CRFA class for the 2D boostness equation, we have made some very good progress, but still the, uh, the estimate become quite technical. Uh, uh, hope that <coughs> we have some nice results to report <coughs> in the future. So in the, in the remaining time that I, I don't have much time, maybe only a few minutes. <coughs> about, so I would say, say something about the, uh, some recent computation that I, I did with uh, my, my postdoc, my former student, De Huang. Let me first say quickly about the, the degenerate uh, three, now it's still equation with degenerate coefficient. Spoon's coefficient by degenerate at the, uh, at the origin, right? So, so in, this is attempt to look for a singularity at the near the symmetry axis, not, not occur at the boundary. So again, we use the same kind of, uh, uh, we scale formulation for U1 omega 1 plus I1, right? This, uh, now it has a viscous contribution, right? And the viscous coefficient vanish like R squared, Z squared as I mentioned. So, so the same kind of setting is a periodic cylinder, right? And I the one if you, you have to impose a no slip, no flow boundary because of the viscosity is not degenerate at the boundary. But the actions all at R is zero. So this is the initial uh, profile for U1 and omega 1. This is, they have this a nice uh, uh, shape, like a corner shape, right? And then very quickly for the uh, uh, for, for for this solution, develop a two scale structure, two scale in the sense that the uh, it's a traveling wave singularity. That the, the the this is the U1, this omega 1. So, so in the sense that the center of the, 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 uh, the maximum U1 will approach to R zero, but much slower than, than the speed that the, uh, the it collapses to zero, zero, right? So, so that is the, uh, the, here is the further illustration. So this is the zoom up on the, of the, uh, uh, the U1 profile, the 3D plot. So this is the location of the, as a function, uh, as a, the R coordinate and the Z coordinate. So the R, R coordinate collapses to zero like a square root capital T minus T, but Z collapses to zero like a linearly capital T minus T. So this is a two scale uh, singularity. So this is omega one. So we call this a tornado type of singularity. So, so, so you can see that the, the flow from initially is very smooth and then it gets swirling in and it collapses into the symmetry axis. So this is additional, uh, to, to depend on different starting point, you get a different swirling, right? At the center of the tornado is very quiet, there's less a spinning, right? The, the further away from the boundary, from, from the center, they have a very rapid spinning, right? So this also show it here, a very rapid spinning. So this is a, a odd function in as function of Z. So you have a, a anti-symmetric, like the water dipole structure. The water dipole created a hyperbolic flow that push the flow very close to traveling toward the R one, R zero, toward the symmetry axis. So that's very important because the hyperbolic flow trying to carry the flow away from the symmetry away from the z equals zero. So, uh, so, so by first pushing the flow very close down to, to z equals zero, that's why the two scale structure very, ma makes sense. So then you can uh, prevent the flow being transported away from z equals zero. 
right? So there's an opposite sign here, right? So this is the, 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 the velocity field profile. You can see the flow traveling like this, and then suddenly it make a sudden turn, turn up this hyperbolic flow structure. So this is a U1 as a function of time, this is a COM2, and then you can zoom in, this will look like a cell similar profile. The same thing for the omega one, the vorticity, right? But if you look at the V-scale profile, the center around the Sheldon way as with the length scale ZT, it's Z scale like a capital T minus T, you look like you have a cell signal profile, right? So this is a, the R cross section of U1, the Z cross section of U1, when you put them all together in this self similar variable, it is rescaling variable, you can see that at least you have partial self similar structure near the front, right? But the far field is not self similar. So you can do some scaling analysis so you can see the maximum U1 and maximum omega 1 and maximum autistic grow very rapidly. So you do a fitting, there's a, a stable phase, you can do a very good fitting, right? So, so the fitting give you a, a, a this scaling, right? So the maximum autistic blow up more than uh, power linearly, right? No, no more than one over capital G minus T is not integral in time, right? Uh, and and this, this is reflected two scaling uh, structure. If you have only one scaling structure, for the Navistow equation, then it should be it should be linear, one over capital T minus T for the maximum autistic. So this is again show you the fitting of the U1 maximum U1 as a function of time. And then this is show you the uh, Lanin alignment. So this is the cross section of a function of R uh, because the right hand side of U1 is just two perseverance of Z times U1. So you can see the perseverance of Z is always a little bit larger ahead of this, uh, uh, this of U1. So to induce a traveling wave that, that go into R to zero. So this is the Z direction. Again, the perseverance of Z is uh, large near Z to zero. And then also drag the, the, the U1 approach to Z, Z to zero. So the R square is a function of time, Z is a function of time, the Z is like scale linearly in time. So it suggests that the uh, Z scale like a capital T minus T, but R scale like a square root capital T minus T, which is also consistent with the total circulation that's to be conserved. So at the end, you can do a scaling analysis to show that the, uh, 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 that the, the uh, if, if the solution emit a cell similar blob, it turns out that the degenerate viscosity also select a length scale. It play a very important role to set a length scale. So that select the length scale give you C algorithm one, that means the capital T, ZT, it is a, it is a capital T minus T. And then the, the uh, uh, omega one scale like a quadratic, yeah. Which is consistent with the numerical uh, observation that we have, okay. So at the end, so basically we, we, we find this, uh, uh, this uh, degenerate, now we still create the degenerate viscosity, create a traveling wave solution that travel towards the, the, the origin with a two scale structure. So U1 belong like a capital T minus T, but the, uh, uh, the center of the traveling weight in our directions travel like a square root capital T minus T, but the collapse of the self similar structure is linearly in, in time, okay. So I already run out of time. So I think the, uh, I should stop and I have some result that I prepared, but I think I probably should, should skip that for now. So to, sub, to summarize that the, uh, uh, I present some numerical, new numerical evidence that the, uh, there's a tornado type of singularity induced by the last law of the 3D uh, oil equation. And also now still with a degenerate variable, co variable diffusion coefficient of, uh, of this order, the approach to the origin. So the singularity did not occur at the boundary. So we also, uh, had, uh, I, 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 I describe a, 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 a framework of a computer assisted analysis for the one the HL model for smooth initial data. So actually we already uh, complete this work and it's going to be posted very soon. Uh, this was smooth initial data. And, and also for this, uh, the weaker class of an initial condition for C1 alpha initial velocity or the C alpha initial vorticity, we can actually really show that the 2D boostness equation and 3D oil equation develop a finite singularity. So so this is with the present of boundary, with, with a structure very similar to the computation that I did with four law. And also we can also prove that the, uh, I did not have time to show it for the 1D uh, generalized Degregorian model, the Degregorian model, uh, original Degregorian model that we can prove that there was a, a finite time singularity in the whole plane. This is a cell expensive, expanding cell similar blow up for 1D. So this paper just published in CPM. 
So we are currently trying to uh, uh, develop a, a generalized uh, analysis to, to analyze the 2D business and 3D oil equation with moon initial data. We, we believe that the, the framework we developed for the 2D, for the 1D HR model could be, uh, could be very useful. So these are some of the reference. Yeah, I stop here, sorry, one more time a little bit.